Okay, I'll uh, 702 and I'll call the meeting to order for the special council meeting June 17th at 7 p.m. Um, I think we have a few additions to the agenda, Peter. You got? You want to add a, a closed session? Do you want to take us through yeah. that? Yeah, if we can add uh, add closed uh, at the end of the open um, uh, for the purpose of uh, considering a land matter uh, under section 90 sub 1 sub E of the uh, community charter for reasons for closing. Okay. And uh, sorry, go ahead. Okay, no, carry on. I think you wanted to um, add a, an item for uh, Bear Smart uh, matter. Yeah. yeah, two items. Um, one, uh, Bear Smart in garbage, a little follow up from our, our meeting on Tuesday. And uh, um, sorry, under under new business or under uh, yeah, the council any... or new council or new business, Peter. What do you think is most appropriate? Yeah, we could do that under. Under either, um, and then um, under under council, um, just a quick one to see if we can uh, all agree a date um, to do the CEO midterm review for council only. So that um, would be actually, if I could, uh, if I could ask that we put that off until such time as we finish with the last one, we haven't quite wrapped up the details on the last one. And as well, I don't have, my, my vacation calendar may be in a bit of a state of flux at the moment. So um, I, I would appreciate um, putting it over until the next meeting or we could even, you know, explore dates in the meantime, offline or whatever, just for that purpose. But um, I, I don't have, uh, I don't have a clear calendar at the moment, so. I uh, appreciate just uh, delaying that for a bit. Okay, we, we could. Sorry, I thought we had closed out on the, on the previous one. Um, and, and this meeting was um, the council only session um, to, to sort of kick off the midterm review. Oh, it's just council only, not myself involved. Yeah, it's council only oh, for the okay. This is the 2021 review, the midterm. Um, okay, yeah, if it's not me involved, then my calendar doesn't matter. Okay. Right, so we'll just have a, see if we can swap, uh, check our calendars and do that at the end. That was the, um, yeah, that was the two things that I wanted to add. So, let me get myself back to my, uh, my agenda. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> picture here. All right, so we have no public. Is that correct? Have no public. We have no minutes to approve. So that will take us straight into the first item, which is uh, bylaws and the procedures bylaw, which I think is a bit of protocol, COVID protocol catch up. Peter, do you want to Sorry, just before before we get into that, um, perhaps uh, a motion to uh, adopt the agenda as amended. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I knew I'd stumble before long. All right. Um, can I have a motion to adopt the agenda? Yeah, I'll make that Fred. motion, Neville. Thank you. In a second, Fred. All in favour? Aye. Do you have Aye. objections? Aye. Aye. And as I said earlier, there's no public participation, which would take us straight into um, the bylaws. So I'll start with. Sorry, the, I've got to read the. We've got to read the closed section first, right? In the, uh, in no. The adoption of the agenda, no. Okay. No, no, we're not. Uh, we're not doing the close first. That'll be okay. at the end of this uh, open meeting. Okay. So, okay, so we'll uh, to close at that point. If you want to uh, introduce the uh, first item uh, of the yep. first bylaw, uh, 4A, that would be great. Okay, 
So um, council procedures bylaw 476, um, amendment to the bylaw 607, we're given three readings and um, I will turn it over to Peter to explain this. I think it's a little bit of a of COVID uh, cleanup in the way I read it, Peter. Yeah, so um, early early on in uh, in COVID when it first uh, uh, when it first happened. Um, hey, I'm did... not playing. Oh, sorry. Wait. Sorry, I was talking to my dog. I thought I was on mute. No worries. Um, we did amend the uh, the bylaw to provide for uh, uh, all council except for the chair of the presiding chair of the meeting to be uh, able to um, uh, uh, attend the meeting electronically, uh, but the chair of the meeting was to be um, at the place or location of the meeting. Um, and it used to be that that was something that, uh, as I understood it, was, was required when they first introduced the uh, electronic meeting provisions uh, many years ago. Um, the ministry, however, uh, published a, um, a document this past December with respect to procedural type items for the benefit of um, local governments on a number of different things. And I noted that um, within that, it was clear that um, we are at liberty to actually change our procedure bylaw so that if necessary, all five members of council could be attending the meeting electronically from locations other than the designated location of the meeting. Um, so because we just don't know what's around the corner and we've seen that uh, to expect the unexpected is the way this pandemic has rolled out, um, I think it would be prudent to uh, at this time um, amend uh, the bylaw so that uh, you can have have that option if necessary. Uh, I understand that uh, the province is looking at um, lifting the provincial state of emergency soon. Uh, it may happen early in July as soon as they move to stage three, uh, assuming that that takes place as planned. Um, and so once that happens, the current ministerial order 192 which provides us with the authority to um, have all five of you from different locations digitally, if necessary, um, will no longer be um, in effect. And we would be relying strictly on a procedure bylaw. So if we do three readings tonight, uh, we could adopt uh, or council could adopt uh, on July 6th, which would be pretty close to probably when they lift the state of emergency. Okay, thanks, Peter. Um, any questions from anyone? Comments? I just want to clarify, Peter. So that basically what you're saying is we have the freedom to adopt that going forward, regardless of pandemic. Yeah, so regardless okay. of the state of emergency being over, um, all five of you could be in different locations, not at the... Um, council chambers, nobody would have to be at the council chambers other than um, the designated uh, recorder or um, and not even actually the designated recorder. So um, anyways, just it provides that freedom and flexibility uh, when required. I think that, you know, from a perspective of, of um, transparency and democracy and providing uh, the opportunity for the public to actually see and hear council um, um, in, a, in a normal council meeting setting, that, that I think is probably still an important aspect um, going forward. And, and as we uh, hopefully keep progressing out of the pandemic and perhaps return to council meetings and chambers, that is something that, um, you know, that the value of having the council in person and public in person is something that uh, is is one of the fundamental tenets of of our system, 
So it shouldn't be taken lightly, but it is good to have the flexibility when needed. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to offer another perspective um, on that because I do think, you know, we're moving into a, a new, you know, people have learned to adapt. Um, there's upsides to telecommuting, which is, you know, greenhouse gas uh, emissions reductions if, if the option exists. I mean, if people have, um, you know, um, zero emission uh, transport options, maybe that's, you know, rules that out. But, uh, you know, we can look at this in a broader way. And I, I recognize, um, you know, the face to face piece and the value in that. But there are other things to consider just in general. Maybe it's not only council meetings, maybe it's general attendance of staff if you have a far commute. Um, but I uh, just want us to keep that in mind. Yeah, I would have to agree with Norm on that point, especially knowing on an inclement weather night in November, knowing, Peter, you're driving back to Whistler and Pam and I are driving back to North Vancouver at, you know, 1045, 11 p.m. I think it'd be better for you guys to just be at home safely tucked away. Sounds good to me. Um, sorry, Peter. I... I when I looked at these changes, I assumed that we still would need to have the hall open and one member of the executive executive officer in the hall. Is that not true? Generally speaking, we would have um, a, a designated officer of the municipality, whether it's myself or Pam, um, as well as, as uh, Carla, the recorder. Um, uh, in, you know, if we were to have, for example, a local state of emergency due to uh, some hazard taking place, um, we would have the flexibility, I think, to uh, deal with that, so. Yeah. But yeah, other than those circumstances, we still have the whole open. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments or should I, I read the resolution? Take that as a no. Um, so uh, the resolution says that um, staff, or well, the recommendation is that, and I want to use the resolution that council procedures bylaw number 476, 2015, amendment bylaw number 607201, um, be given three readings um, as amended. Uh, all in favor? Aye is yes. Aye. Yep. Aye. I'm in favor. Yep. Okay, well, that brings us on to the Trees, Views, and Landscapes bylaw, number 393. Um, number six, sorry. Yeah, bylaw number 393, 207, amendment bylaw 603, 2021, uh, which is on page uh, 35. And the, the resolution, uh, the staff recommendation is that the trees of use by law um, and amended be adopted. We gave it the three readings in the previous meeting. Has, has anyone got any further questions or further clarifications um, as it's written? I think it's now written the way we agreed on Tuesday night. Maybe Peter, you know, if you want to just confirm that or take us through the changes? Uh, yeah, the, uh, the changes are highlighted in the, in the staff report. Um, the, uh, the addition of, um, of the word um, imminent uh, for hazardous tree, as well as uh, restricting it to relying only upon a certified arborist. Um, and then the uh, moving the um, requirement for a nesting survey by a registered professional biologist um, up in the order so that it became something that must take place uh, effectively, uh, regardless of the balance of considerations that council will take into account on an application for an exemption during uh, the nesting season for cutting. Uh, so that's effectively what it is. Um, we did, um, you know, as indicated by uh, Mr. Byrne at the meeting the other night and 
as uh, indicated or, or recommended, as you see in the recommendation from the tree committee, um, tree committee thought that he should be subject to the old bylaw. Um, and we had an email today from Mr. Byrne reiterating that he felt that um, it was unreasonable and unfair to uh, subject him to um, a bylaw which was not in place at the time that he made the application. Um, I checked back with legal counsel. Peter, Peter, um, could, we, could we do the bylaw amendment and then deal with uh, Mr. Burns? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Um, I, I guess what I, was, what I was getting to though was, was whether or not, um, yeah, no, okay, sorry. Yeah, I think I've, I've jumped ahead um, beyond what I ought to have, where, where I ought to have jumped, sorry. Thank you. Okay. All right, um, we, could, we could go around the room. Um, I, as I said, I think it's been amended as we, reads as we required, as we requested. Um, the other night when we gave the three readings. Um, does anyone else have any comments or observations that they want to add at this point? Or should we just uh, read and approve the bylaw and then let Peter get on with Mr. Burns' application? I recommend calling the motion. Okay. All right, I'll call the motion that the Trees, Views and Landscapes bylaw number 393207, amended, amendment bylaw number 603, 2021 as amended at the third reading be adopted. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Councillor Abbott and staff. The mayor voted as well. Thank you. <laughs> uh, just a question if I could. Um, is anybody else cutting in and out? I, I don't know if I've got a faulty um, Cat6 cable on my computer, but everything's freezing up about every minute and a half. Is it, is Mine's fairly consistent. I'm oh, actually yeah. doing great, <laughs> surprisingly. <laughs> Sorry about that, Fred. <laughs> well, you can have my bandwidth, I guess. <laughs> I need a new computer anyhow. Ours crashed over the weekend and I'm on the backup. <laughs> anyhow, sorry for the intrusion, just wondered. I think, it's, uh, I think it's yourself, I'm afraid. Okay, so that then takes us to, oh, sorry. Um, we can do the, we can do the, um, the discussion about our calendars later. We don't have to do it. What the heck happened? Sorry about that, guys. My iPad decided to wake up and join us. Um, so Peter, we can do the uh, the new business, and we'll do the the council meeting calendar thing at the end. We'll go straight to um, the Burns bio uh, application. Then does that make sense? Okay. Okay. So carry on as you were. You were um, explaining us. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we have the the uh, application for tree cutting. The 255 Ocean View Road, uh, which was deferred from the last meeting. Um, and the tree committee recommendation is that it be approved, uh, subject to uh, cutting, topping, trimming, etc., to be in accordance with the photos and requested work, and the applicant cleaning up all associated debris. Um, the tree committee, <coughs> the tree committee suggests that the nesting bylaw that existed at the time of application should be honored. The removal of these trees has a direct impact on the construction work being carried out by the applicant. Um, and the last item for the tree committee's recommendations is the tree cutting permit shall be valid for a period of three years subject only to confirmation prior to any cutting or repeated cutting within that period of compliance with the bylaw restrictions regarding bird nesting season and a traffic control plan Works APC and other requirements of municipal bylaw being met. Um, so, with respect to the applicability of, uh, of the uh, previously existing um, application, or sorry, the previously existing bylaw at the time of the application, uh, uh, without getting into details, um, I can advise that I double check with. Uh, uh, with our lawyers and um, 
confirmed that there is no express statutory protection for in-stream applications such as this one. Um, uh, the province has expressly protected some in-stream applications, for example, under the Local Government Act, uh, if you were to make a change in a DCC bylaw, uh, there are restrictions and essentially grandfathering of an applicant who has already applied. Um, there's a couple of others as well that I don't need to refer to, but uh, those are expressly in legislation. And the, um, the lack of that uh, with respect to other applications uh, provides uh, that uh, the legislative framework essentially allows municipalities to change bylaws midstream. Um, of course, the, uh, there, there's always a consideration to be had for the impact that a bylaw has on an affected person um, and, and that it be relevant, um, or sorry, that it be reasonable, uh, that's a relevant consideration. Um, however, here, um, the effects on, on the applicant are in the big scheme of things relatively modest. Um, we could wait until the end of August, or sorry, mid-August, um, or obtain the necessary um, bird nesting reports from a registered professional biologist at a modest cost. Um, there are requirements that um, might be frustrating to the applicant, uh, but are not considered from a legal perspective to be significant uh, in terms of weighing whether or not uh, the bylaw change to a midstream applicant is reasonable. Um, so the, uh, the actual um, resolutions to be passed cannot quite follow the, um, the um, recommendations of the tree committee. Um, at this point, council has adopted uh, the amendments to the bylaw. And um, in accordance with those amendments, um, council um, ought to consider this, you know, while it's not specifically framed in terms of uh, an application for exemption under the new terms of the bylaw, uh, I think it behooves council to consider that this uh, applicant uh, effectively um, needs this application needs to be considered under the new bylaw as as an application for an exception um, and therefore uh, council needs to look at uh, the requirements as they now exist um, and there's no indication that this is a hazardous tree um, there is a, a requirement now for a nesting survey uh, by a registered professional biologist um, the extent of which um, may be not too significant uh, given uh, what's left to be cut. And um, that will be for him to investigate. Um, and the other considerations that council needs to take into account are the circumstances of the applicant, the scope and location of the application and the timing of the cutting in relation to the nesting calendar, which is now attached um, as Schedule E to the bylaw. So in terms of that, we are in the middle of the highest activity level of nesting season. Um, and um, there's nothing really weighing on um, lessening any other circumstances, um, but uh, council uh, certainly can consider uh, if it wants to provide an exception, which is, uh, as I stated, subject to uh, the nesting survey requirement. And uh, I'll just stop talking and let you take over. Okay. Um, thanks, Peter. I have a, <clears throat> I have a few thoughts, um, but I'm happy to let uh, someone else speak first if they, if they would like. Peter? Uh, just a question, um, Peter. Did the applicant clarify the hardship? Because they did express hardship uh, on Tuesday night, and we'd have to assume that that's uh, 
that's the case. Was that was that sort of qualified in any way or quantified in any way what that hardship is? Um, I, I don't know that we have a quantification of it in terms of um, delay costs that might be associated with the uh, applicant having to wait if um, if he can't cut uh, the subject trees until August 16th at the earliest. Um, he does have a substantial or a substantial landscaping project um, in in progress uh, and uh, as well as um, other works related to uh, a new deck for which there's a building permit as well as um, improvements to create a, a much better driveway entrance to the property on the east side of the house um, which is not impacted by uh, this particular um, activity. So it's a question really of, of um, whether or not um, the contractors engaged to do the landscaping work uh, would have to be sent away and brought back in the last half of August and whether or not that, that results in a, in a cost uh, to the applicant. I presume it does, but we don't have any details on that. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm not sure the extent to which um, removal of the trees is a prerequisite for other work that is ongoing in terms of that landscaping project. So if, thank you, uh, Peter and Norm. If I could weigh in, I actually passed Mr. Byron this evening on my way down to the beach at Kelvin Grove before our meeting. He's a volunteer with our fire department. Uh, there was a call out on the cliffs. They brought the hovercraft in to take somebody out. That's an aside. Uh, but I do see a member of our community who's engaged, who's in good faith, applied for permits, gone through the process, and we have changed the game on him midway, midstream. I think that for myself, this looks like an exemption, a grandfathered clause. By we, we live with this tree bylaw for many, many years up until tonight. And I, as much as I support the changes that we've made moving forward, I think it is causing undue hardship if he has to send landscapers and contractors and everything away, we've seen the cost of all of this type of construction just skyrocket due to COVID. I don't think it's fair. He made a plan. He went through the proper, the proper process, the proper channels. We made a change and I don't think that he should get caught up in the fallout of that. That's my opinion. All right, if I can just clarify one thing, um, the consideration of whether or not a registered professional biologist conducting a nesting survey um, is required or not is not something that is an option for council to consider. It is a mandatory requirement. If anybody wants an exemption to cut during nesting season, that's the way the bylaw now reads. So he, you know, if council grants the exemption, it will be on the basis of him having to get uh, a nesting survey by a registered professional biologist. Council cannot waive that. Oh, I'm fine with that. Um, Fred, do you have any thoughts or I could go with mine? Let you go first. Yeah. Um, I, I have, quite frankly, I, I am totally supportive of the, the changes to the bylaw and um, I see the candidate at this time as sort of the straggler of the old system, just uh, carrying on. And um, I do have a, a fair amount of sympathy for a situation. And I, I'm just be sitting here trying to think of how we could uh, lessen the impact for him. Um, you know, if he could get a registered professional biologist uh, right off on it, um, I, I think that would be the best solution. Um, but, you know, to Peter's point that um, that's the only way we could do an exemption, but um, um, we may be legally allowed to do this, these sorts of things, but 
Um, I'm struggling with the ethics of it, um, of changing horses midstream on somebody. Um, I, I'm not really happy with it, but um, legally it's okay. Um, sorry if I'm waffling. Um, I, 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 don't have, I don't have a real hard, confident position on this because I see both sides of it and it's a, a difficult, difficult call, I think. Um, I'll give my observations um, slightly different from what we heard. Uh, first of all, I think, um, which I hope Mr. Bain is aware of, and we should all be aware of, um, even without our bylaw in place, he's still obligated by the federal regulations to make sure there are no birds in the trees before he cuts the tree down. The only difference is um, if you contact to the conservation office and you told them it's single tree on a property, they will say you're obligated to confirm that, but they would not require that you use a registered professional biologist. Um, and we've we've made that you know, a little, in my mind, a little clearer and a little of a better practice. So he still he still can go kill birds, regardless of whether you have this bottle old or new or change. So that that's a that's a fact. Um, at a level above us. Um, I've been to the property initially when he did his, um, his application for his encroachment and I went there uh, just recently. He has completed the retaining wall part of the landscape um, well past the tree that he wants to remove out. And he's done that since. Um, and he now has a, a narrower access, a narrower driveway. Um, and he's already trimmed the trees on the other side of that access um, without a permit um, because they are they are of, a, of the size that you need a permit to trim um, and so I think the only thing in my mind that he can't complete is the final part of the landscaping that involves removing the tree um, and, and either way you need to confirm he has uh, there's no birds in the trees um, in order to do that with without the amendment to our bylaw. So I, I likewise um, accept that he could, um, we could give him a variance, um, if that's the correct term, um, but he's gonna have to, you know, follow the bylaw and, and confirm that the, the birds are out of the tree. And in the case of our bylaw, he's gonna have to do that with a, a registered professional bio, uh, biologist. Um, and we know, as Peter said, it's relatively moderate in cost if it's you know, in small scale. So, uh, yeah, those are, those, are, those are my thoughts. So I guess we are, we're probably all heading towards the same place. Um, so to, if I could get a clarification from Councillor Bain. Um, I wanted to understand the ethics dilemma. I wasn't clear what you meant. Was it in relation to switching the bylaw midstream? Or was it in relation to um, what I believe you said was um, subsidizing the cost of the bio biologist? Did I, did, I, did I hear you say that right? right? Uh, no, my, uh, my thought was uh, of uh, the switching midstream as uh, yeah, okay. the CEO had mentioned. I'm, yeah. I know we can do it. I, I understand we can do it, but um, should we is another question, um, but after this, then it's, it becomes moot. So I don't know if that clarifies it for you. Yeah, no, thanks. I, I thought you had suggested that the, that the village cover the cost of the biologist just to make it make them whole and, and compliant. And I, I kind of liked that idea. So maybe it's just my idea to suggest that. But um, I do think similar to the theme in the room that changing, you know, the goalpost midstream is, is really unfair. And uh, just not, it's just not a good faith to do that. And to, to Jamie's point, um, you know, we've had the old bylaw by in place long for a very long time. We don't need to switch it overnight. Um, and, and uh, you know, going forward, we know we're doing the right thing. Um, but this particular applicant, I think, needs to uh, be considered uh, under the previous bylaw. Okay, so I don't know if there are any other comments, but Peter, going back to the suggestion that we can 
consider this under the previous bylaw. Um, I guess from what you said earlier, we actually can't because the bylaw has been changed midstream and the bylaw is as it's now written, correct? Yeah, the bylaw is now uh, as consolidated with the new amendments in place. It takes effect as soon as you adopted it. So um, you, you tied your own hands effectively. You can't, you can't. Um, is it just. Sorry, Norm, you're cutting out. I would have to agree that taping to today was a mistake. And I think Council needs to stand up. Hear me? We can now, but we couldn't earlier. Try that oh, again. Oh, sorry. My, sorry, I'm, I, I'm agreeing with Peter. I think we made a mistake. We should not have deferred the application to today. That was in my mind that that shouldn't have happened. We should have considered the application on Tuesday. I know we can't go back and change that, but uh, we have created a bit of a problem for ourselves. And uh, I think we, we owe it to the applicant to fix that. I would agree with Norm. Um, I would say that we could use this as a test case and an example moving forward. I believe that we should absorb the cost of the biologist. I think this would maybe be a good information to offer applicants moving forward because we can say in real time, this is exactly how much it costs this applicant. This is a one-off scenario, not setting precedent by any means for any other applicant, but I do agree with Norm. We should have considered this previously. I don't think it was fair to change the terms midway through. He did go through the proper channels. It's our responsibility to have fulfilled that for him. So I would be in favor of absorbing the cost of this one particular case. Uh, through the chair, it's, it's uh, Mayor McLaughlin. I concur with uh, Councillor Cunliffe, and I think that's the feel of the room. And I think we should uh, ask the chair to call a motion and move on. So the motion, just to be clear, uh, needs to um, change what currently exists for uh, paragraph C um, from the tree committee's recommendation. Um, it instead needs to reference the fact that uh, a registered professional biologist must be uh, retained to conduct a nesting survey, um, which which must obviously find no nests. Um, and then you can go on to say that the cost of such survey, if somebody wants to make that motion, um, be, or uh, maybe you have, uh, be borne by uh, the municipality in this particular uh, case. Couple of thoughts on what we what we're suggesting here. Um, so, so first of all, it it's it's rather open ended. Um, let's assume there is a nest in the tree, um, and and I think the tree the tree the, the tree permit application shows a tree in a picture, but it refers to trees, and I think he's intends to take more than that one tree out from my understanding. Um, and if it is more than one tree and the likelihood of finding nest is greater, um, what are we suggesting that you, know, you can continuously bring back a RP bio every week for the next few months? Um, or, I mean, it, it seems to be like there's no, there's no cap to it. So I, I would be concerned about that. Um, and I will point out he has already trimmed the trees and he has already trimmed the trees for the access he needs to complete his building project. That's, that's apparent if he go visit the site. Well, so my I, suggestion, oh, sorry, Neville, I thought, are you? I, I, I was finished. I was just going to round off to, so how do you cap it and make it reasonable that he, that he doesn't give him, you know, um, carte blanche to go spend as much money as he wants on a song on a on a RP buyer to keep coming back um, because it's not on his money. You know? I mean, if he did if he did do that, 
um, with sort of without any limits or any caps on it, um, you know, the number could add up. It could be a lot more than than you, any reasonable person would spend because now it's not his money. So how do we, how do you contain that, or how do you cap that, or define what is reasonable to spend? My suggestion would be that I think this is generous of us to uh, commit to absorbing the cost of the biologist and that he chooses, it's almost July. So we're looking at seven, eight weeks before the end of songbird nesting season. Pick your best week, the week that you think would work for him. We will pay for the biologist to come at that point it's a one-shot deal. And if we find something, then precedent is set. We're not cutting down the tree. He's going to have to wait. I, you know, not, it's not going to be a full on trip to Disneyland for everybody here, but I think it's a good learning curve and see how it works. I spoke with him very briefly. He seems like a reasonable guy. I think this is a nice offer. And I think that moving forward, this is an example that we can set for the rest of the village I think that we are being kind, we are being generous, we are being reasonable. And he seems like a reasonable person to me. So no, it's not a every week come and check the nest to see if this is the day you're gonna cut down the tree. That's not reasonable. So if I can perhaps interject momentarily, um, as I understand it, the biologist would assess the, the situation, determine how many days is appropriate for, do, for doing survey. Maybe that he only feels that one day is, is sufficient. I uh, might th think that three days is sufficient. If it's one day, it's probably going to be a few hundred dollars. If it's three days, it's probably going to be close to a thousand. So the simpler thing and to leave the, the sort of the decision making in his court would be to simply put a cap on it. Let him decide when and, and, and uh, who he retains, uh, put a cap on it of uh, up to a maximum of, you wanna say $1,000 if you wanna say less, so that he has some potentially some skin in the game, uh, that would be up to you. But that would be the simplest way of dealing with it is uh, the, the suggested amendment that I, that I read out um, with an addition of, putting a cap of whatever number you want to put on it. Good. I would take that as a friendly amendment. And I would suggest $1,200. Uh, just a question though, wouldn't the biologist have a look and check the tree in the nest and be able to make an estimate when the birds would be finished with the nest? That way you only have one meeting and he would say you can do it after such an rather date. Would that not be the way it would work? I think the way Peter described it is, Fred, is the way the biologist would come out and depending on the season, if you're doing the peak season, you, you would want to observe it for longer, but he could come out on day one and say, oh, I hear a bird, I see a nest and leave. And then you've got a failed, failed process. And he's not likely to come back. He might tell you that birds are such and such a bird will be there for six weeks or three weeks or two weeks or whatever. Um, but if you are gonna get the all clear, he has to view it over a longer period, and that depends on the time of the year and number of trees and other factors, I guess. So that's where, where Peter is going. So, yeah, to put some, as Peter suggested, some skin in the game, if you gave Mr. Byrne a cap um, and he found a, a biologist, the guy might say, well, don't waste your money trying now. Let's do it in three weeks' time or, or whatever that is, right? I'm guessing. But yeah, to get a clear permit, you need a duration. To get a failed answer, it might, you know, might happen in the first half hour. Well, this is our mistake. It's not his mistake. And I'll, I will remind you, regardless of how bad, or you still can't cut a tree if it's got a bird bird in it, a bird nest in it. Um, regardless of the bad, that's a that's a federal regulation. None of us can cut trees 
private property or otherwise, it has a bird nest in it. You're simply not allowed to. It's your obligation to make sure that it's clear of bird, bird nests. So, I don't know, we uh, heard a thousand dollars, maybe three out twelve hundred. I, my read of the room is that, that people want to make him whole for the cost, but certainly want to make sure it's reasonable and capped. Does anyone else want to pick another number or should we let Jamie uh, put forward her? Uh, through the chair, I think given the, given the uh, relationship this, um, this applicant has with the community, I think uh, 1200 as proposed by Councillor Cunliffe is very generous. And I, I think when the CAO speaks with him, I'm sure he's gonna move on it quickly. Do you have other thoughts? I think, uh, I think Norm's uh, in favor of what, he's, what we're hearing. Jamie and Rana, Fred, any further thoughts? Um, no well, I mean, I'm, 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 uh, I'm not really happy that we're in this situation. You know, we rushed, uh, we rushed deferring an application without understanding the consequences of it. We change a bylaw without understanding the consequences of it. So we're, we're essentially issuing ourselves a ticket here of $1,200. I just want us to be aware of that as a council. Um, what we're doing for the resident is correct, but we should really, you know, consider pumping the brakes once in a while and, and not rushing through these things. Um, so, you know, there is a lesson learned. Jimmy makes a good point. Uh, through the chair again. Actually, if I may, Councillor Abbott, actually, we're lucky we got off at 50% of the tickets because um, uh, the applicant on Bayview also fell under this. And his, his, he's, he's not of the rush to do stuff, as I understand it. Because if he was, we'd be looking at two times this. So to uh, Councillor Barmere's point, it's because of the legislation that was pushed forward. And that's the kind of council we are. We are, we are. we are not ones to stand around. We've made a decision, we move on it quickly and we pay the consequences too. Uh, that would be my piece on this one. Yeah, I mean, a general observation, let's not be too harsh on ourselves. We are trying to do something and it is time constraint because this is the time of the year that the birds are getting killed and that's what we're trying to avoid. Secondly, Whenever you change the legislation, there's always in-stream permit applications. Um, in other municipalities, if you're trying to wait for a, for a gap, there was no application, you never pass, pass a bottle. I mean, there's always going to be someone that gets caught up in the, in the timing, and that's just inevitable. Mr. Chair, I think it's time to call the motion. Um, I think we can call the motion. Uh, Peter, do you want to go, as you, I think you said you had it, kind of drafted out, we we're just looking for the number to cap it with. Do you want to do that for me? Yeah, I'm not sure if Carla made any notes on what I said previously, <laughs> uh, but I think it was along the lines of, uh, instead of uh, uh, paragraph C, uh, that um, the applicant uh, must obtain a favorable nesting survey um, and, and the cost of which um, shall be borne by the municipality up to a maximum of, and I think I'm hearing $1,200. Well, and then we the forward that motion, unless there's any further amendments. So, so you, you, would, you would first uh, vote on the amendment as so introduced or, or put forward by Councillor Abbott. And then once you've voted on the amendment, then you can vote on the, the whole uh, recommendation uh, as amended. It, it was never moved and seconded, so. Uh... Okay. Sorry, simpler then, just the whole thing as amended. <laughs> okay. All right, well, let's maybe try, I'll try and move it and recap it if I can. Um, so we, we're putting forward the uh, tree committee recommendation with the amendment that instead of section C, um, that the, the permit is approved subject to 
the applicant receiving a uh, an nesting survey by a registered professional biologist and the village will compensate that up to up to the value of twelve hundred dollars. We just maybe add the word favorable nesting survey as opposed favorable. to just nesting. Yeah. Thank you. Favorable nesting survey. Thank you. Can I have a second on that? Second. Any further discussion or can we vote? All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Did you vote in favor? Yeah, I'm affirmative. I think I got drowned out. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so Peter, no, sorry. So now we still have a second step to do? No, no, because uh, as Carla pointed out, there hadn't hadn't been uh, moved or seconded in the first place. So there was no amendment required. It was okay. just the whole thing as amended. Okay. Right. Peter, if someone could let me into the meeting on my PC, I'm, I'm, I've moved over from the phone. That would be great. Please. Thank you. Recording. 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 We have Norm on one device. Sorry about one. that. My apologies. I, uh, my, my commute was a bit longer than expected. Okay, um, that takes us back up to the agenda. So that takes us done, done, done. So we, we're all done with the exception of the new business. And um, I'd ask that we are uh, adding something on base modern garbage, uh, which came up from the last meeting. So I'll just fire off my thoughts. So I did review the two bylaws um, as suggested by the CAO. Um, the garbage bylaw, which I think has a few items in it that are not quite in line with what we're currently doing, but uh, I don't think that's necessarily the end of the world. The intent of it's very obvious. And it's very obviously well, one of its key um, intentions um, is, is clearly to uh, limit the um, wildlife attractants and therefore um, impact uh, in their reaction with the community. So that's very clear. And it does say at the end of it, um, the maximum fine of up to a thousand dollars. But it doesn't stipulate, it says up to, I think, or to a maximum of. And then in the fees, fees bylaw, um, we have uh, several penalties that um, the ones that are clearly around animal attractants, uh, the most obvious ones, of of three hundred dollars discounted to two eighty late payment three twenty. Um, there's a couple, Peter, that I find a little odd because there are animal attractant um, provisions as well, um, but they they're only sixty dollars. So some of them are a little bit, you know, you can if you don't keep your um, outside receptacle in good repair. You only pay sixty dollars, but if you don't have one that's up to standard, you pay three hundred. So there's a little sort of ambiguity in there, and, and how you pick the bylaw, or how you pick the fine. But I think it's it's obvious that the intention is, if you attract wildlife, if you don't follow good practices, you can be fined up to three hundred dollars. I think that's that's the intention. Um, and I think you said that a resident was fined previously, and I must. I'm assuming it would have been that $300 fine if that's the case, but I don't know. No, it was actually the $60 version. $60. Okay. Putting it out early. Putting it out early. Okay. Yeah. Um, so as a follow-up action, I I would like to get some clarity around those two bylaws, and I'm not suggesting we do it tonight. Around yeah. those two bylaws, as to um, you know, if if you do something that attracts wildlife, bears more than anything, but it, it says wildlife in general. Um, that you get the three hundred dollar fine. Um, I think I think that's what I'd I'd like to see going forward, and we can look at that in the future. The other um, request and ask I have from council: there's been a, a few people um, that have you know, contacted me, or that I've noticed in, on Facebook, for example, that seem to have an interest in um, 
in refreshing the Basin Art Committee. Um, and I, if Council agree, I'm prepared to go speak to Norma Rogers. I believe secondhand that she's quite willing to pass the reins over to someone else. Um, she decide, described herself as retired from the function, I believe, um, and sort of refresh that committee. So Council can want to give me the authority, I'll reach out to some of those that have shown interest and see if we can put one or a few people together um, and see if we can get the initiative going again. So that's kind of my thoughts or, or ask, I guess. Thank you very much, Councillor Abbott. I concur with your thinking. I think that it's generous of you to reach out. I think that the, um, if you'll recall from the people that were at our last meeting, I think that there's uh, the husband and wife team that are very keen on the bears. Uh, so I would think that it would be an easy recruit there. And I think uh, they could probably attract a group, but even if they did it cooperatively, I think we'd get what we wanted and we could give them a bit of guidance. And I'm sure that uh, Mrs. Rogers could give them the mentor. I endorse your reaching out to them, but know that there's residents that are probably standing pretty close to the front of the line to take the reins here. Thank you. No, I, I, if I could weigh in, uh, Neville, I appreciate that. And I think it's a, a good thing to do. It, it feels a bit um, out into the future. You know, I'm not sure how long it would take to pull that together. Um, we do have some relatively immediate tools at our disposal to um, maybe update or educate uh, particularly new residents, um, you know, maybe spread the word through Facebook. We got almost 600 members there on that page, uh, most of whom are, are local residents. I'm sure we could come up with a, um, a, a post and, and it would be well received. Um, the, the community on that forum is, is very active and, and uh, typically um, um, the, the feeling I get is that they care about the wildlife around here. Uh, and uh, they show interest in it, but maybe just don't understand what appropriate interest is. And, and you know, uh, I think we have an opportunity to reach quite a few people quite quickly. And I don't know what that would look like if it's just a, a few posts, maybe once every couple of days or once a week, we just post something um, specific to an issue, not, not political, just um, uh, useful information, education blasts. Um, you know, if you care about bears, do this, and, and you'll quickly reach a lot of people in the village. And uh, sure, there'll be some dialogue about it, but, um, you know, at least people are talking and aware. And I think that's a quick way to get the word out. Um, we do have uh, plans underfoot, underway, um, to do a mail out uh, on a on three things now, bears, fog, fat soil and grease, and uh, pay parking. So just to provide everybody with information, education, clarity on, on those three topics, I think we can combine that and uh, make, a, make a, a very worthwhile and um, a good mail out for people to receive. You know, what, was, what was the second one? You said Bat oils and grease, fog. Uh, so we've got some issues with the treatment plant because of uh, over twice as much of the uh, amount of fog uh, being handled by the treatment plant as what it's designed for, um, which creates lots of issues. And uh, fog is also uh, something that people with septic systems ought to be aware of and the damage that it can do to your septic system. So it's applicable to everybody in the village and something that, um, you know, municipalities all over the place to do put out educational pieces on it, try to get people to not pour their grease and fats and stuff down the sink. Um, so uh, it's a good piece, nice, got a, a little brochure happening and uh, uh, we'll have it ready to go for uh, next week, I think, for all three. Is that something you, you, you can or would digitize, Peter, that, that we could share on this, this um, neighborhood forum? Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there already has been a piece in the village update on fog. Okay. Um, and um, I think now these pieces a little bit more extensive that for, the, for the brochure. Uh, but yeah, I, I looked at a digital version of it today. Um, 
we're just working on the background and tweaking and stuff like that. But uh, certainly uh, something like that could be you know, a link provided. Yeah, I guess a link or, I mean, the, you know, the, you don't get people's attention for long. So if you have, a, you know, an image that's, that's compatible, that sends the message in a succinct way, um, you get a lot of buy-in fairly quickly. I don't know if you guys have three sort of digitized images with, with the messages you want to send on those three topics, or if you could maybe tailor that. Um, I think that could, again, it could reach a lot of people. Specifically yeah, around the bears and the garbage management, I think that seems to be kind of an elevated issue. Well, and yeah. We know it is, so um, yeah. I'm, I'm happy yeah. to put that out there. Yeah, uh, we, uh, um, we don't really do, we don't have social media. So um, what we usually do is put it on our website, but someone else will have to link it yeah. to Exactly. Well, I guess what I'm specifically what I'm asking for is if you guys can provide me with three digital images on the on the issues you have that are palatable on that forum, you know, that are that are uh, like I said, sort of succinct and like an image format, like a JPEG. Um, then I'm happy to do that, and uh, yeah, um, you know, we can and let it stand, just... you know, no 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 message around it, simply just the image, and, and it can, it communicates what it is we're trying to share, and. Uh, so we, yeah. Norm, we have we have linked directed people to links to the to the website before. Um, yeah, I'm aware of that. Yeah, um, yeah just I, from a marketing perspective, I just I'll just say it again: a, a punchy image that that communicates, you know, a few things really clearly and quickly is 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 often um, uh, it's it's digestible. People remember it. They feel something about it. Um, it motivates them to do something. Um, you know, cut, cuddly image of a bear goes a long way. So on, on the bear one, um, Norm, as you're probably aware, there's been a fair bit of traffic on the on the Facebook page about that. There's been quite a few people have actually posted stuff from other municipalities and other, and other areas. Um, and I, so I'll sort of put forward my earlier offer. I'll reach out to three of the four people that seem the, the most interested. And maybe we can, I'll get them to pull something together and we'll forward that on to Peter for, on the bear stuff. Um, and get it added to the fog in the parking that seems to be under control. And I think I can do that pretty fast, like in the next couple of days. Well, it's not going to be done for tomorrow's um, village update, but uh, pretty soon after that. Thank you. We could still do something in tomorrow's update as well, I guess, um, with, with a more to follow kind of message. Sorry, for which I'm going to reject it. Well, I'm wondering if we put something in, in tomorrow, uh, the village update about um, the, where our intention around getting going back to the bear smart. Um, and then I'll follow that up with getting the, the three or four people I have in mind, talk to them. Um, and then we you know by the next, the next village update um, or later we could have something that's a little more um, impactful uh, to use Norm's words. And then we can, we can link that. So is the intention to revitalize the committee? Yeah, I was going to I think we might have to some. these people first and ask the question whether they want to revitalize the committee the way it was. I don't know the terms of reference. I didn't go look at it. I do remember it. Um, or, or whether we, yeah, or if it's something different. I don't want to be too prescriptive in how we went about it. So, no, we'll just, it will be done. Like, it will be will be done with the original. Sorry, the original committee is the starting point, and I will speak to Norma. Um, and yeah, maybe okay. we'll move our sign that's at the store to some we more prominent and make it. Uh, in the mind of what it's about. Yeah, sorry, I just want to be clear. Like I think we've got two parallel things going here, which is revitalizing the bear committee, which I think is a great idea. And I'm thinking we could do something a little more immediate, which is. Uh, blast out a few um, education tools around the three issues that Peter raised, um, the bear smart, the fog, and sorry, Peter, I forgot the third one. And I'm suggesting if we had three pun punchy images, we could get those out there right away and they'd reach a lot of people. Uh, and we can do that in parallel, but I'm, I'm asking for, for, for three images that I can use on social media um, to reach a, a large number of villagers and educate. I'm not trying to take away from the Bear Smart Community Initiative in any way. I just think we can get some information out there fairly quickly. 
uh, Norma did come into the office to drop off the um, old brochures and magnets that they had, and she suggested that um, having someone that's um, social media savvy might be uh, good just for that reason. Norm. I can be that. Peter, what, Peter, what was your timing on, on the fog in the parking, the other two? I mean, I, I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to check back in with staff. Uh, the fog one's pretty close to being um, proof ready, but not printed. So, um, you know, I think, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, the bear, the bear stuff, um, uh, as, as uh, Carla alluded to, we've got about 200 brochures that uh, Norma dropped off, but um, we're having bylaw officers hand those out to people who, um, who they may come across as well as um, uh, looking at uh, doing a new one or updating or getting more printed off. So um, not quite sure of the timing. The other, the third one was the pay parking and just, you know, that'll be in the village update tomorrow too, just to make sure people realize what they can and can't do and how it's intended to work. Should we, should we recap what, uh, what we're at and what we're planning to do? Um, Norm, Norm would like to, I mean, if we have something going in the village update on, on parking and fog, I guess it's pretty easy to, to link to that or to take one of those images and put it in a Facebook thing and then link to it. Um, and I guess those are obviously vetted and approved messages. Um, on, on the Bear Smart one, I don't know what we could have uh, ready to go that quickly, other than using which is which there have been several Facebook post, post postings of uh, other other municipalities and other organisations, links and literature. Yeah, we usually use existing literature. Um, that's pretty easy to access. And Norm, we do have the software to be able to design um, what you are requesting. So I can just send you the three images and then you can link them to the information. Thanks, Carla. Hey. Okay. Any other any other thoughts or anything on that? Okay. Um, did I miss any? Oh, we're going to try to see if we can um, the councillors if we can quickly uh, pick a, a near term date so we could get the midterm CEO review going, given that uh, we're almost in July. Um, I'm not going anywhere for the next week, um, so I'm pretty open to it sooner rather than later. Um, pretty much sure we have all the, the stuff to go because we're just using the same forms we did last year. Um, just want to one more blush over the goals and then get it out to everyone. I write it, yeah, I don't. I, Stop with Monday, any, any offers on Monday, whatever other people's calendars look like. Um, sooner is better for me than later. Um, we're planning on taking off part of July. Um, um, but uh, yeah, the next week would be great if we could fit something in there. It'll be, it'll be a quick meeting, I would think. Norm, I think Ron, Ron when are you back? Um, I'm, I'm back Monday night. I am with you. I'll, I'll make time for an hour if we could do it at six o'clock any day next week. Yeah, I could. <laughs>
Where are you, Ron? Oh, where am I? Oh, God. False Creek? False Creek? Yes. Uh, yes. Tough, hey. rough. Yeah. Hi, Mary. Uh, we've got a climate action meeting, uh, climate action committee meeting on the 23rd, so that won't work. And then. That's at 7 30, though, Norm. Yeah, well, I got to eat dinner. We've got the. Points. The 50th on the 22nd, the 50th anniversary, 22nd at 9.30. So Monday probably would be Monday or Thursday. I hate making commitments on Friday. All right. So should we go for Monday then? If Monday is preferred by all. It's fine. What time on Monday? Anytime after five works for me, if you want to do it early, I think Ron said he's only getting back Monday. Okay. Um, I would have to punch out by 6.30. So before 6.30, it would have to be wrapped up. I like the game pressure myself. Uh, can we make a, can I get a phone in number? Cause it looks like it's going to be a very hot day. I might have to take this meeting at the beach. I think a phone in, it'd be great, uh, Jamie. Cause I think the, uh, it's going to be a quick meeting as Neville says. Bueno. Okay, done, Neville. Right. Uh, what have we got? Six o'clock Monday? Is that what you're saying? Perfect. Can do. All right. Carla, if you could set that uh, meeting invite up for us. Close meeting, council only, normal thing. Thanks very much. Okay, so I think that takes us to the need to close. And that was not in the agenda. Is someone going to help me out with the words or are you going to read it for me, Peter? I didn't write um, it down. Uh, that the meeting be uh, closed uh, for the purpose of discussing a land matter um, pursuant to section 90 sub one sub E as in elephant, um, and that's for that's it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll uh, I'll put that forward as Peter Reid. Um, all in favour? Aye. Are we? Thank you. Um, it's approved. Are we going to call or go to a second meeting, or are you just going to make sure no one joins us? Yeah, I'll just make sure no one joins us. Okay. And stop the recording. Just one sec.